same thing and project straight down on that end the 28 feet would line up with that edge of the building so that's what's really cool about um, using a station point you don't have to do the laborious measuring of all this on the ground line the difference between doing a true projection a straight on elevation projection is by projecting everything through the station point where it hits the picture plane is where we project down so I don't need to do the measuring on the um, right hand side the left hand side rather I can just go through that intersection at the picture plane and um, draw the edge of the building on that side so let's carry that through to the next step I want to locate this corner so I'm going to go from that corner through my station point and find out where it hits the picture plane and then go through this corner on the inside through the station point oh well, my straight edge is just long enough and then I want to go from this corner of the building through the station point. So those three new points or lines are going to be used to draw the, the building in our perspective by lining this back up. There we go. I'll just tape this down now so it doesn't move. Alright, so this is the end of the container. This is the other end of the container. This corner or this face of the container would be parallel to this um, side of the building, so it needs to go through that vanishing point. So if I take my straight edge and line it up with that vanishing point left, let me do this from the other direction. Let me line it up here so my arm's not in the way. And then line that up with my vanishing point left with that corner and draw in a construction line. Where it hits this line that's supposed to represent the corner of the building is going to be the bottom corner of this wall. And now if I go from my vanishing point right, which might be off the screen, no it's still in the screen, good, through this corner here and see where those two intersect. There's the inside edge at the, at the ground of the um, container. Do the same thing at the tops of these containers. So there's the top edge of the container on the right and the top edge of the container on the left. And then I can see the actual container shape in its L shape form and it's been drawn with accuracy in perspective and so everything that I just projected, um, you can see how you can do that with your station point. So if I've got doors and windows and such, as long as I can find them on my plan and project them through my station point and then locate them on my picture plane, I can then project them to the surfaces up um, here. So there's, I've got the basics of my container now and the shape it is. So let's draw these two windows on this side. It's going to be really easy for me to do that. And the ones on the inside are a little bit more challenging, but we can figure it out. So I'll open this up to see my station point again so I can measure things. And I want to um, make some new marks. I'm going to make marks with different colors because otherwise I'm going to go cross-eyed trying to figure out what's what. So station point to the edge of the window. That's the first line for the first uh, edge of the window. Second edge of the window there. The space between the windows. And then the other window. 
Okay, so those are the m little marks that I'm going to be using to reference where those windows are. So let's prep this a little bit on our perspective. Um, I'm going to imagine that the window height is at uh, 8 feet. So I'm going to use my straight edge through the 8 foot mark, uh, 8 foot, this would be 8 feet, and draw a construction line. And then we'll say the sill of the window is at 1, 2, 3 feet. So from here, uh, 1, 2, 3 feet up. Oh, you know what? That's the bedroom. Let's make that sill height 4 feet. I like that better. We'll make that sill height 4 feet. 1, 2, 3, 4 feet. So these windows are going to be up a little bit higher. And then I'm going to line up my my plan stuff I worked out so that these lines and marks that I made on the picture plane can be used again to locate those windows. So there's one of the window edges right there. There's the other window edge. There's the other window and that one. Something didn't line up, I think. I think I don't have this quite positioned right. just didn't line this up quite right. Okay, well, um, I must have messed something up there a little bit, but uh, there are our um, windows approximately. I think I'm just going to make adjustments here. I must have measured something wrong. But uh, the idea being that once we have our height heights established, and if you don't think something looks right, then, um, you know, adjust it or go see if you can figure out where you made the mistake. So there are those two windows on the end. Now, a window on the inside here, or let's take this door, for instance. We can locate it using the station point. But we have to transfer that information from one of these, these edges here where we can measure heights onto that, that wall. So I can actually locate where the edge of the door is on the measuring uh, the picture plane, but those lines I really can't use until I have figured out exactly where that door is and where the door height is um, along this surface wall. So I'll explain that here in a moment. We're going to take this line here, the edge of the door, and make a mark. There's the edge of the door, and there's the other edge of the door through the station point. I'm using multiple colors so I can kind of keep track of things. It's a good trick. I think that's part of my problem is uh, this isn't exactly laying out exactly the same way every time um, when I'm lining this back up again. But I will take these two lines that I've gotten from my picture plane. That's not lined up, is it? And I know that door is somewhere here and somewhere here. And to get the height of the door, I can go from, that's the height of the door is seven feet. Watch this, I've got to go from my vanishing point right through the seven foot mark, draw a line until it hits this wall. Then go from that point to my vanishing point left and project it back. Now that's, a, that's seven feet along that um, inside wall and there's that door right there. So I've, I already got the width of the door established from the top from projecting it from the station point and then I got the had to project the height seven feet to that edge that's a common edge that this wall and this wall share so then from there what vanishing point is parallel to this surface of the uh, container it's the vanishing point left so I have to project that to the left and that's going to give me that seven foot height all along that edge. So I can now do the windows by projecting the height of the sill and so on, and I can start to build this uh, two-point perspective. So I think this gives you enough to show you how you use the station point, um, measuring using ground line, because we could have done that as well, or met, and, and how often we're going to be measuring using that vertical measuring line. 
um, in how you're going to establish your plan um, and figure out where your vanishing points are and your measuring points are based off of how you position your floor plan. I will warn you that the first couple times you try this you might get your station point in the wrong place or it's um, not it's not for, far enough away from your building. If that happens, um, one of the ways that you can prevent that from happening, I should say, is before you go as far as I did, right back here while we were um, setting this stuff up, you want to um, set up your cone of vision here on the station point. So I'm going to use that 30 degree angle um, in both directions, so there's 60. Um, so 30 degrees from the 90 degree center and 60 and then go through the station point through those through those angles to see if your entire building is going to be inside of your cone of vision. So there's my cone of vision right there, these two pencil lines. There's my cone of vision and you can see that my cone of vision completely includes the entire building inside the center of it. If you do, do this and you find that your cone of vision is cutting off your building in one end or the other, then it means you got to pick up your station point here and move it over to the left or to the right and make sure that cone of vision puts the building in its more or less in its center. Um, that doesn't mean that the station point has to line right up with the corner of the building. That's a bad setup for perspective, but you just want this cone to fully encompass your building. And if your station point's too close, then you're going to get a lot of distortion. And then if your station point's too far away, you're probably going to run out of room on your paper. So this might take a little bit of trial and error. Um, and you can to see this kind of with much more clean lines and see the whole picture, I do have a two-point perspective layout um, in AutoCAD that you can watch that shows the concepts as well.